I think a lot of us like travel for very different reasons. And I'd like to just talk about, like, let's pull some of those out. So on the count of three, I would like everyone to just say one of the reasons that you like travel. So we're going to do this. So you've got a moment to think. One, two, three, just blurt out the thing. So ready? One, two, three. Exploring. Okay, I didn't catch all of it. Um, but I think travel and the things that you, we love about travel, you can get by traveling to other open source communities. So when I was growing up, I grew up in a small town in the Midwest of the United States. It was the kind of place that uh, on school picture day, you would uh, probably dress your kid in his nicest clothes and make sure he had a really crisp bowl cut. So if you can imagine that kind of place, that's where I grew up. Um, when I was growing up, we had a, uh, a meal that we did that I, we called fish and rice. And it looks something like this. And so if you said I was having fish and rice tonight, I knew it was going to be something like this. Um, it probably didn't have the sliced lime. That's a, a little bit fancier than we ever <laughs> did, but something like this. Uh, and then later in life, I had a pretty awesome opportunity. I had the chance to move to Spain. And I studied in Spain in the University of Seville for about a year. And that was a really amazing learning experience for me. Um, I, I made friends with all these wonderful people who were seeing the world in a really different way. And I realized that I saw the world in a really different way than they did. The events that we, uh, we celebrated and how we celebrated them, the stories we told, the heroes, the villains, all these things were different. And it was a powerful realization that that was a way that we could all learn from each other. And it was awesome. And I think one of the things that's really manifested that you can see this in really directly is in the food that we eat. Right, so I went to Spain with an idea of fish and rice. And then I discovered this, this is paella. It's a really awesome combination of fish and rice and some other good yummy stuff. And then later in life even, I had the chance to go to Japan. I taught English in Japan for a number of years and it was pretty cool. Uh, and again, I learned so much about myself and the world and what it means to be human. And also, another combination of fish and rice. As a kid, that elementary school kid, I probably would have been horrified uh, to think that someday I would like this combination of fish and rice and think that that was pretty good. But it definitely happened. So I first started coming to WordPress events probably about three or four years ago. And uh, just like Chris mentioned, you, that's, that's, a, that's kind of a big thing because I came from a different community, uh, also happened to be Drupal. Um, and I quickly realized, though, that a lot of the things that I learned from those travel experiences, from the life experiences, really served me well in understanding and being able to relate and make new friends and things like that. So WordPress is a very special kind of ecosystem, right? Um, there's both people and technologies. Um, but the technologies is, is an open source ecosystem, right? Uh, and that's a very special kind of technology that's different than the, the software that most of us get on our phones, et cetera, where we you know, agree to a thing that says we don't own it and uh, the long list of requirements and yes, all my data is going to you. Open source software comes with a very different outlook. And the, the agreement that we accept when we use WordPress uh, is much more about the freedom. So yes, there's freedom as in money, uh, but there's also freedom in the ability to inspect it, alter it, add to it, redistribute it, other things like that. And this is sometimes called the freedom is in liberty, or the, that sense of the word freedom. But one of the things that's uh, common to open source technologies is that they need people to survive and thrive, right? They need people doing webinars and podcasts and books and events and meetups and all of those kinds of things. And another interesting thing about WordPress is that it itself is made of open source technologies. So PHP is the language that we have that, use, that we use to create the database and do the logic and log in and all that stuff. Um, but then we store stuff in databases, MySQL or Maria. These are also open source technologies. And usually, we run most of our sites on something called Linux, which is an open source operating system, not Windows, not Mac. Most WordPress websites run using Linux. And most of them display their pages to the world with Apache or Nginx. And this is a so-called LAMP stack. Um, these, if you will, are the ingredients of WordPress, the open source ingredients that WordPress uses. But a really interesting thing is uh, out there in the world, and that is there are a gazillion other tools and technologies that combine those same ingredients in very different ways. And so uh, uh, Wikipedia tracks 57 different projects 
that all use these same ingredients, PHP, Maria, Apache, et cetera, to do some really interesting different things. And I just chose a few logos here. Not all of them are content management systems. Some of them, you know, uh, CVCRM happens to be about uh, uh, tracking people and such, and uh, CRMs. Um, but all of them use these ingredients in slightly different ways. Uh, and, but they all have their own communities and events and podcasts and things. So if you look at one example, uh, Drupal, in the next three months, there are a whole bunch of different things. And some of these actually might be near you. And they might you know, be an interesting way, as Chris was saying, to check out the way we do fish and rice differently. So if you live in New Jersey uh, or London or New England or Chicago, there's something happening in the next three months that might be of interest. Might be easy, a, a quick trip, a short bit of travel. Or instead of looking sort of crossways to something like Drupal or Mod X or other things like that, you can go deeper into one of the ingredients that we share. And look at PHP. If you look at PHP events, um, uh, right now, actually, we could leave this talk, grab lunch maybe, uh, hop on a plane, go to Paris for SymphonyCon. That sounds pretty good. Um, or Sunshine PHP. I think that might be in Hawaii. Seems like a good reason to go. Um, but if you're into PHP or JavaScript or any of the other technologies that we share, there are conferences and events and podcasts and webinars and other things and places to learn more about the, tool that, the underlying tools. Or you can step back. There are a ton of events that are sort of generalist events that have some sort of explicit or, or, or just sort of um, thematic uh, inclusion of open source. And again, if you just look at the next three months, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, Amsterdam, Oman, uh, oh, there's another one in Hawaii. Maybe just like go and stay. Um, seems like, again, seems like it's very work related. Um, my advice though is that, um, that if you do, go gracefully. And so these are the things that I've uh, felt have served me both in travel as well as uh, in, in visiting another open source community. Uh, start by listening. And then go with the idea that you are learning, not converting. Um, I think probably very few of us like the experience of someone coming to our house and telling us that we've got life not figured out and we, we're all wrong and we should do it differently. Um, just like in the real world, guides can be a great help. So there are people in this room, I'm positive of it, who have gone to some of those different events or have some connection to some of those different technologies. Um, if you know them, you can ask them for advice. How would I get into PHP? How would I, uh, like, where, would, where should I start with JavaScript? Um, uh, maybe they'll even go to a meetup with you. That's pretty cool. Um, but if you do that, especially if you do that, make sure that you get out of your little group. Like probably for those of us who raised our hands and said, yes, we like travel. Um, we've all seen the groups of people walking with the umbrella, following in a clump, talking about something, and then moving on and staying with that. Don't do that. You know, the umbrella people are wonderful. They're, they're handy. It's helpful. But also, go out and make some connections. And that can be super daunting. It's hard to, uh, to meet people. Um, but it's also pretty awesome. And it opens you up to lots of possibilities in the future. Um, and the last thing I would say is share your journey. Every time we make connections between open source projects, we build lines of communication, we build possibilities for the future. And I think if more of us do this and share what we learn uh, and help others do it as well, the stronger our communication will be across these projects and the better we'll, we're going to make the open web. So thank you. My name is Drew Gordon. I'm the Director of Developer Relations for Pantheon. Uh, and if you want these slides, uh, they're at Twitter. I'll, I'll be posting them on, on my Twitter link. Um, that's what I wanted to share.